Today, not crew, Nantwich. Yay, I've remembered. Hello, oh, what's going on today, Lord? He's got his black hat on, eh? Grey scarf, neckerchief. It's bloody freezing. Oh, wow, it's bitter. We're on the 12th of January, something like that. January, January, January. cocked up, chin's frozen. Even though I can be a bearded burbler still. We'll keep that beard now till it gets hot. That's a signal. When the weather changes, when my beard goes. If you want a morsel wear, I'll tell you what, down Troppy, oh, it's just boring. Look at that orange. If you want somewhere quiet, look at this. The Troppy is the place to be. Get yourself stocked up, get yourself down here, look. There's benches, there's all kinds of stuff going off. 48 hours to two weeks in winter, wonderful. I can't hold this very long. this all the way down here, look, arm, beautiful armco, flat ground with rings, bloody rings, eh? All these benches, but it's lovely in summertime. So, but it's so beautiful here in summer. On tit troppy, eh? But it's packed down here. Not now though, look, I've got all canal to myself. Yay! I can see boats coming. It's like 20 minutes later, they're still coming. An hour later, they're still coming. It's not a quick process. <laughs> Lots of bridges along here as well. Look how flooded that field is, look. Wow. Farmer's fields, same higher than the canal. Oh, look at that. Give us a filthy thumbs. Woohoo! 200 yards that way is a secret nuclear bunker. I tried to call it, but I think they're closed today, I'm not sure. I won't answer it anyway, I was going to go down, but I'm not going to walk all that way, moor up and then walk, and then find out it's closed. It's absolutely freezing, isn't it? It's not the sort of best time to go and sightseeing in these places, because it's, it's really cold. Oh, it didn't look it, I know it doesn't look it, but it is. I took my word for it, I'll put this phone down now, so there. It's 30 miles down, I was going to walk. I was going to walk down. No, oh, I can't bother. I have to drive down sometime. I think it's down. I think it's even open. Private road. No, back to the boat. 
was going to pop in, but it's not. It's not a pop in scenario. Leon's doing the lock. I thought I'd just nip in, nip out. It's not as simple as that, is it? Watching. What's that? I don't know. He's got a watch on it, a clock on it. That's good. Yeah, yeah, you're all right. <laughs> this is old. This is uh, Nant Nantwich. British 91. Tesla land, isn't it? And all the, tes Tesla. all the Teslas in shops you can eat. <laughs> two days, probably two weeks more in there, isn't it? You can just top where you want, mate. It's not not far from. Thumbs up. Hey, 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 cheers, mate. We love duckies. Always nervous about that, aren't you? Wonderful and beautiful. Nantwich. We've got this gorgeous aqueduct built in the early 1800s by Sir Walter. By Sir. Um, a radical design. Thomas Telford is one of the first engineers to use iron to build a structure. The plan below shows how the aqueduct was made, made up of a series of cast iron plates bolted together, supported by six cast iron arched ribs on stone dressed brick, abutments, abutments, abut, abutments. Speak well, I can't speak. This 1950s photo was taken when the water level was lowered for repair works. The box section and the overhanging towpaths supported on cast iron uprights can be seen either side of the canal. What a fabulous Thomas Telford. First iron aqueducts were narrow, making it difficult for boats to displace the water as they passed across and the hard work for the horses hauling the boats. In Telfer's design, he used the full width of the structure 
extending the tow paths across the water and making it easier for boats to displace the water. Very clever. Yeah, look. It's got his three piece suit on, look. Oh, you're loving that, isn't it, eh? Let's have a look from below, shall we? There we are, look. Thomas Telford. Shropshire Union Canal, Nantwich Aqueduct. Filthy thumbs up, rip this. This is, Nan this is Argos, Nantwich. They've got a tool station. Ooh, I don't think you need all the food you can eat. All stuff you can buy here, lot. Headphones, new headphones for me. Got some new headphones at last. These are only 29 quid, so the wireless. Very good quality sound, to be honest. Uh, Sainsbury's, 40 hours they last for, battery, rechargeable, perfect for the old vlogger rippers, filthy, filthy thumbs up. <laughs> well, we're leaving, we're leaving, um, <coughs> well, we're leaving. Nantwich now <clears throat> been here, We've been here uh, just one night Went down to the shop did some shopping and then we're on we've got to get to um, Up north really we're getting up north because we have got to hang around for the We're going to hang around Oh hello I haven't got I haven't done a shower or anything yet Going to hang around um, Chester Liverpool Manchester that area because we're gonna nip over the Ribble link so I'm booked in for April and it's now Jan middle of January so I've got a few months to wait to hang around so I'm just going to hang around that area I'm going to join a golf club for one of those flexible memberships type of thing we're just going to hang around and play golf for the next couple of months so there won't be much vlogging I don't think this is why I, I like to be way behind because times like this you know <laughs> Nantwich, I tell you what, it's beautiful uh, little town. Just walk down there into the town centre. I went to Sainsbury's yesterday and I showed you on the on the video, got my new headphones. Ooh, look, titty misses. I'll tell you what, they're comfortable and they're good, they're really good, much better than the old ones. Morning. Oh, lovely. Definitely tick over land round here, this is. Tick over land! All the way to Nantwich it's very very quiet, but as you get into Nantwich it becomes very very busy. It's a very popular little place to moor up through winter. A lot of boaters seem to congregate around Nantwich, Nantwich and uh, along the Shroppy and at those areas, you know. We're here at Erliston Locks, but we're not here to go up these locks. We're here at the bottom, we've moored up. I've just parked the van behind us, walking down to the boat. I can see the boat just over there. From here. Oh yeah, hey. Down there somewhere, next to that one. Yeah, this this takes this this set set of locks here take you onto the Angolan Canal. Say what? This is empty. Look, that's empty. This pound. It's about three foot down. That pound. That's strange, isn't it? That's not good. It's not good at all. Sometimes, when I'm not being silly, uh, just sit at the window, uh, just sit sit there looking out the window. It's amazing what uh, goes past, turns up, you know, takes off or flies past. There's always something going off. Beautiful, isn't it? That all these birds, whether they're black headed gulls or just seagulls or whatever they are, they live on that reservoir at the top of Hurliston Locks. They seem to 
hang around that area. Very pretty to see them. I'm just about to take the gearbox off. Now I'm hoping, taking that cable off there, gear cable, I'm hoping I can undo all these bell housing bolts and just pull it back on its shown shaft. Pull it back on its own, push that shaft back and hopefully, hoping it holds the gearbox on there so I can get the, um, so I can get my hand in and check the, uh, drive plate I'll we'll try to take all the bolts out let's try it if they don't work it don't work does it simple got four bolts out I mean the worst ones were at the bottom but you can just reach around it's not too bad I've got three more left to do all right it's all out they're all out um, oh there's one there wait a minute it's not dropped yet. Anyway, that's all out, but it's not. Uh, I might have to get a pry bar on it to pull it, pull it back. I'm hoping I can pull it back on that shaft. Um, it just sits there while I faff, faff, you know, while I faff around with that drive plate. But you know, it's not going really, to spin in all sorts, isn't it? I reckon. Just hope it'll go back nicely. I might just slacken that. Slacken that off a little bit. Those two seventeens just give me some movement back, you know. I'll try the pry bar. I want to try just tapping it, tapping this length of wood with a hammer, hoping I can just push it back a little bit off the spline, and that should free it off. Fingers crossed. It's moved. I put a bit of wood against that and hit it, and it moved a bit. Just a little bit more. It's coming. I'm hoping I can get me a pry bar in there. Not to force it too much, you know. See that? You want to be even, don't you? All the way around. that back or not just take it off I'm taking it off it should go back that easy I'd have thought I can get it off that far lot it's proving harder to push that back attached so I'm thinking I might have to because as the weight's dropping onto it it's harder to turn and push back hmm should we just slide back shouldn't it I'd have thought it's going to take all the weight though isn't it i mean that's i can't see why it shouldn't be all right it's a big shaft oh did you misses so i've got it back i've got it back on that shaft what i did i turned it with a spanner as i pushed this back and so it went back quite easily it's supposed to be only supposed to be playing there is there shaped isn't it get me hand in I can get a ratchet on it you know try and turn the crank can't feel any play I'm not sure there's no play in that it's beautiful smooth no grunginess no play perhaps a thou of play or something there's no leakage from the main seal but looks of it pleased with that what I have noticed is a lot of dust. There's a lot of dust down there. Build up. Yeah, that's that's this. 
that's this stuff this neoprene type plastic it's a bit warped isn't it <clears throat> see a part number can't see any part numbers it was quite hard getting these 5.5mm um, 5 .5 these Allen bolts because somebody had painted all um, undercoat paint all over the place, all over that drive plate, you know. These edges are pretty sharp, so be careful. Really sharp edges. Looks worse than what it is, it's going to feel it. Problem with these is that if somebody's painted them, it's got all thick paint inside and it's got to get that out first. Or you can't get your Allen key on. Ah, I think this is the last one. Hard to crack these, I think they've got some Loctite on them. I think there's six all together. There's a lot of debris from that drive plate there. All the way to the very end it takes you. That's all the bolts off. And that's just getting that drive plate off. I'm hoping that pulls out like it's nothing of course it doesn't eh? of course it doesn't uh, I hope it's not marked or balanced is it but it's painted in as well isn't it Ugh. you can see all the debris at the back of the gearbox as well so it is well and truly worn isn't it whatever this plastic is it's worn just getting the thing out now. I wonder if I need to get a put a bolt back in there. Can't quite see this. I bet it's painted in lot somehow. I'm gonna put a bolt in there. Must have to line up with something. Oh, I don't know. It's never been off, has it? What I've done is I put a washer behind there and hoping that will that will use that lip as a as a puller. No, perhaps somewhere a bit longer. A bit of a puller to pull it out, you know. Experiment time in it. I just need something a bit. Can I get? Can't get the pry bar on there and there. If I can twist it, twist it out. No. One last try now. Oh, you beauty. Oh, he's out. Oh. So it is possible to get it out then without taking the gearbox off. Hear that? That, chuck, that rattling. I don't know whether it's worn. I have to take it somewhere. Are they supposed to line up? I'm not sure. It's all. It's all distorted. In there, look. They're all distorted. It's definitely, out of my opinion. My opinion, it's all down there. Look, it's all all the powders there from that plastic. So it goes onto there and it's cleaning it off. They're all tight. And these ones, I'm gonna check all these anyway. I don't want to turn them in case it's locked tight on them, lock thread. And then you crack the bead, then don't you? I'll just, I'll just check it with the spanner. Well, that's off now then, that's it. This is your drive plate. I would imagine it's original. It rattles. That's, that's rattling. That's ticking over. You can't, it doesn't rattle when you hold it. But it all comes apart, look. Mm. 
Bone Rippers. It's rattling, isn't it? So, see that there lot? All that play in that. That's going to rattle like... That's going to rattle like a what good one, isn't it? So there you are. It is possible to remove your drive plate without taking your gearbox off, I think, so far. Putting it back might be different, I'm not sure. Oh, look at that look. Hmm? I hope you haven't got balance these. There's any markers on them. I can't see any marks or anything. Hope you haven't got to balance them. Looks original where they painted it when they painted the engine and stuff, surely. It's all dust all over the place. Well, I can't feel any, any play in that spline, so that feels all right. I'm happy with that. And it, it turns very smoothly. Right. That's it for today.